Okay, in this lecture, we're going to start to really distinguish what makes a power amplifier different than other types of amplifi amplifiers, such as a low noise amplifier. When we design a low noise amplifier, we start with a transistor and we have an impedance matching network that transforms a fixed impedance to the desired impedance at the LNA. And generally, the desired impedance at the LNA is the conjugate of the impedance looking into the transistor drain. Typically, when we look into a transistor's drain, we see some real part R sub D and some capacitive part of the impedance J omega C sub D. And so we design a matching network that, for instance, transforms 50 ohms to RD plus J omega CD. This type of match is called a conjugate match, and it maximizes the gain or power transfer. So what makes a power amplifier different is we have essentially the same thing. We have a transistor that might be biased through an inductor, and we have an impedance matching network. But our impedance matching network is not going to provide the complex conjugate of the drain impedance. Instead, it's going to provide a load impedance that is equal to the optimum impedance of the transistor. And we'll discuss more about that in a moment. The transistor I said is biased through an inductor, L sub zero, and L sub zero could be resonant with the parasitic capacitance of the transistor. So our, our impedance matching network is now a power match, and a power match maximizes power generation. And we'll see why in just a moment. So let's examine the load line of the transistor. And we begin doing this by looking at the characteristic curves of the transistor, that is the current, the drain current, versus the drain voltage for different gate to source voltages. Now when we bias a transistor for operation, we typically set it at some quiescent point. And if we connect a load to the transistor, the load dictates the voltage and current swing at the transistor drain. So our load is effectively going to cause the signal current and signal voltage to swing. And ideally, the signal current and signal voltage would swing from the maximum current possible to the maximum voltage possible. And the load that would cause this to happen has a slope that's the inverse of the load impedance. So if we pick a load line that causes the transistor to swing from the maximum current to the maximum voltage, this load line would be the optimum load resistance, or R-opt. Let's further consider that when we do our analysis, we want to make sure that the transistor stays in saturation. And so we have the concept of a saturation or knee voltage. Oftentimes we just take the knee voltage to be what the saturation voltage is or the maximum current. So our optimum resistance load line is then given to us as VDS max minus V knee. over ID set. This allows a full scale voltage and current. So it's natural to ask then what happens if RL is greater than ROPT? I've just drawn a slope where RL is greater than ROPT. And what we can see immediately is that if we had this condition, the transistor's drain voltage would be allowed to swing through its maximum range, but not the full current range. This might provide a higher voltage gain, but it would also provide a lower saturated output power. 
and they call this condition voltage limited, or sorry, current limited. So it's also natural to ask what would happen if the load resistance were less than our op. I'll draw the load line for that condition. We have now a slope that is steeper than the optimum. And you can see that the transistor would be allowed to swing through its full current range, but not its full voltage range. Now the load resistance is less than the optimum, so you might also expect that it would have lower voltage gain and lower saturated power. Because it can swing through the full current but not the full voltage, they call this one voltage limited. So for a PA, the optimum PSAT is achieved when the load resistance RL is equal to that optimum load line curve. And this is not necessarily or likely the highest gain point. And so that's one primary difference between a power amplifier and an LNA. We design it to achieve a high saturated output power, but not necessarily a high gain. So in the next video, we'll start to look at what makes this challenging.